In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can produce 5 volts DC using just fire and water. The power output will vary depending on the thermoelectric heating and cooling module which you choose, as well as the number of junctions within that module and the temperature of the water which is being used to cool the outer bowl. If you have a body of water nearby which has temperatures in the 40s to 50s, you can expect excellent power output, upwards of a half of an amp. What you're looking at right here is a thermoelectric heating and cooling module. This was removed from a thermoelectric cooler. This side here radiates the heat, and this side here with this plate gets very cold. This is also known as a Peltier junction, and what this is, it's a little sandwiched semiconductor, and it looks like this right here. These can be found in a desktop computer, CPU, or you can get one of these out of a thermoelectric cooler as well. That module that you just saw, which is located underneath this cover right here, is made up out of a ceramic type material. Inside that module is a bunch of N-type and P-type junctions, two different types of semiconductors. The N-type is a negative and the P-type is a positive. When current is applied to the thermoelectric cooling module, what will happen is one side of the module becomes extremely cold and the other side becomes hot, depending on how you connect it. If you hook it up backwards, then you'll have this side become hot while this side becomes cold. So one side is always going to be hot while the other side is cold when current is applied to the thermoelectric module. Now the same is true if you apply cold to one side of the module and hot to the other. You can then produce a current out of these wires. The module is rated for very high temperatures, 3 to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, so they are extremely durable. What I decided to do, because I do have several of these thermoelectric cooling and heating modules laying around, was I decided to make a power supply using one of the thermoelectric cooling modules. Now in the past there has been a couple of videos put out on YouTube regarding making something like what I'm about to show you but unfortunately I haven't seen any that match what I'm going to show you in a minute. Now in order to produce a good current off of a thermoelectric cooling and heating module like you see here what you need to do is you need to apply cool to one side and heat to the other. There has to be a differential in temperature between both sides. If you only heat one side, which was done in a video by a very popular channel, and it really does not work well the way it was shown, is if you only heat one side, what's going to happen, you're going to generate a good amount of current as you're heating it. But once the module is heated to its maximum temperature, the entire module is going to reach that temperature. Once the entire module has reached the same temperature on both sides, that current output will drop off and you will no longer have the output. So you have to heat one side while you're keeping one side cool. There must be a differential in temperature between the two sides to have a very useful power supply made from a thermoelectric cooling module. What I did is I took the module and I designed something that will allow me to do just that. Heat one side while the other side remains cool. I'm going to show you that right now. Okay, this is what I came up with. And I will demonstrate in a little while how well this actually works. But what it is, this aluminum pot that you see right here, I found at the dump. There was a hole in it. So I took my aluminum brazing rod and I filled the hole so I could use this for my project. This part right here is going to be floating in water. Now ideally, I live in a tropical area so the water that I use is around 80, which is kind of warm, but the average person is going to have a body of water near them that could be their swimming pool, it could be a, a lake, stream, it could be anything. The colder the body of water, the better this is going to work. If you look at the inside, you'll see there's a space. I can put my hand in and go under this large coffee can. The coffee can is completely 
separate from the bottom flotation pot. And that has to be because you want the heat here to be concentrated on one side of the module while the other side of the module is being cooled by the body of water that the pot is floating in. Ideally you want that body of water as cold as possible. Inside here is where you're going to place a bunch of twigs, branches, sticks, anything you want to put in here to burn. There's a rod. This rod goes all the way to the bottom of the can where you can see an eighth inch rectangular plate. That plate has silicone thermal transfer compound on the back of it and that is bolted into a thick section of aluminum which is pressed right against the thermoelectric cooling module. You could take a look here in this short clip. This is how it looks. Peltier junction in the middle. Aluminum block with the heat. This doesn't have to be copper. It could be aluminum. And then the pot gets bolted tight against this with thermal compound here as well. This is a piece of copper for the heat sink. What I'm going to do is on the back side of it place some thermal compound, a nice layer, and then push it into position onto the aluminum pan. More thermal compound on top, then position the peltier junction right in the center, and then on the other side here apply more thermal compound, and then that gets connected to the aluminum block on the bottom of the can where the fire will be. Make sure the bolts from the heat sink do not touch this part of the pot. You don't want the heat from the bolts being able to transfer to the outer pot which is in contact with the water. So you're going to put a plastic washer or a fiber washer down first and then you're going to put a stainless washer and then a nut and just tighten it down. Once that's sealed, apply some silicone or E6000 over each bolt and water will not be able to enter. Put on the nut and tighten it down securely on both sides. This will ensure the thermoelectric module is being squished nice and tightly between the pot and the inside of the coffee can where the fire will be taking place. If you look in the bottom of the can, you can see there's quarter by quarter mesh that's placed approximately three quarters of an inch off the bottom. I also drilled into the center of the aluminum plate which is the heat sink on the hot side of the module and the purpose of this rod is to allow the flames and the heat to be transferred easier into the center of the heat sink on the hot side of the module. So you have the can that's getting hot, you have the rod that's getting hot and all that heat is being concentrated on one side of the module as the other side is floating in water, remaining cooler. Now the power output that you're going to get from this unit will remain very consistent at 5 volts DC. The only thing is the current might fluctuate depending on how hot this is and how cool the water is. Now when I tested this I've had up to 500 milliamps output with no problem at all and that's using 80 degree water. So if you're using 40 or 50 degree water, you're going to be getting a lot more than 500 milliamps output from this unit. When you're heating up the thermoelectric module, it's going to produce a lot of current at a very low voltage. What I added is what you see right here. It's extremely tiny. This is called a boost converter module or a buck boost. It takes a low voltage at a high current and it boosts it up to 5 volts DC. The input could be as low as half of a volt. You don't need one that low. You can buy one that goes from 1 volt to 5 volts. So you're going to look for a boost converter that has a 500 milliamp to 1 amp capacity that goes from a 1 volt input to a 5 volt output. They're relatively inexpensive and you can find them online at many different websites. Once this can has been heated sufficiently, the voltage will begin to be outputted from this module and then you'll have usable current to operate electronics as well as charge things. What I'm going to do now is take this outside, place this in the water, get a fire going. I'll bring my digital multimeter, 
show you the output. Okay, everything's ready to go. The tub is filled with water. The pot is floating in the water, keeping one side of the module cool. I have some twigs and other things inside of the can, which is going to heat the other side of the module. I will turn on my digital multimeter right here. You can observe the voltage. It will be 5 volts DC, a steady 5 volt DC output. The radio will come on. I have the volume turned all the way up. And I'll also show you that the lights work as well as the radio is playing very loud. All right, I'm going to start the fire. The digital multimeter is on, displaying zero volts. The radio is on as well. Once the voltage climbs to around five volts, the radio will turn on. Give the can some time to heat up. Won't take too long. Happens to be a windy day, which doesn't help. Keep an eye on the digital meter. Keep observing that until you see 5 volts come up. Okay, we got the fire back. It's good. Takes a little bit of time. Yep, the voltage is popping up right now to the half. Once it gets to this point, it shoots up rather quickly. It'll go to four and a half volts any minute. There we go, shooting up. As long as my fire keeps going. There we go, it's turning on now. And we're at 5 volts. 5 volts, 499, 5 volts. My fire doesn't look too good. Alright, you can see we're at 5 volts right now. Steady 5 volts. Here's my concern for Jameis Winston right now. He doesn't seem to have a whole lot of respect for women in general. And... That's a very dangerous thing in the atmosphere that we are going through right now, at least on the football scene. should be nationwide. That remains to be seen. But he has said things about women, about his status as a quarterback at Florida State, certain privileges that he thinks he has with women based on his status as a quarterback. The comments that he made, and understand this, these comments that he made... So we have a regulated 5 volt DC output and the short circuit current on that output is 1.1 amps. Keep in mind the water in that tub is in the 80s. So in order to have that up to around 2 amps, the water is going to have to be fairly cold in the 40s, 50s or 60s. Even though the fire has stopped, the can is still hot enough to be able to run this radio here. Absolutely. Very safe. They're very liquid. Folks, you really have to protect yourself. We're going to see some bad times when this house of cards crumbles. And you're not going to have enough time, as we said. If one day these indices go down 10, 15, 20 percent, you'll never have enough time to react. Please, get safe, get insured, have a marvelous weekend. Join us again next week for another edition.
So we're still able to run even though it's off. I got the light on. The light is on right now. Spotlight that flashes is on. And that's it. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up subscribe and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.